The Bells Ring August 2012, present day The plane landed in Houston, Texas. Father said he and mother would be there waiting for me at the airport. I thought it was strange, but my father had always done things his way, and I never questioned his methods. My father was very educated, and he knew very well what he was doing. He had never failed in that, and he proved it many times before. So I learned at a very early age never to question his ways. I collected my bags from the baggage claim and made my way to the entrance of the airport. I could already imagine my parents' faces waiting for me. But when I finally came outside with the rest of the passengers, I only saw a few vehicles picking up friends and family. I figured father had rented a vehicle and was now coming back around after being asked to move the car. The sign on the post read, no parking at any time. I could picture him in the back of an SUV, driving up to greet me. I sat waiting and waiting, until a Lincoln with dark tinted windows pulled up. I must have looked pitiful, just sitting there, waiting like an abandoned child. I looked up as the door slowly opened. I wondered if it was my father, even though he hated American cars. Father said we had relatives in the space city. I didn't know what he meant. As far as I knew, we had no other family. My parents were both adopted. I stood up as the door opened further, and a man wearing a black suit and dark blue tie stepped out. He was tall and slightly chubby, and looked to be in his thirties. He didn't smile. He looked troubled, and I had learned quickly to know the expression by heart. He blinked. He seemed to know me before I could introduce myself. He stepped forward, coming up to me. He folded a lip and asked, Miss Claudia Bell? But it didn't really sound like a question. He seemed to know exactly who I was. I looked up at him curiously, almost afraid of what he would tell me. The man dropped his head slightly, and his eyes took on a deep sadness as his lips quivered slightly. I asked, Yes? He took a deep breath. I'm Mr. West, a friend of your father's, Nicholas Bell. I looked around as the world went about its business, with this man and me at the end of it, and we were in another realm entirely. I stared at him for a long moment, glaring at him daring to see what his thoughts read. But I was afraid of what they would reveal to me. I was afraid I already knew. I felt the tears rip through the corners of my eyes, and I gasped. He asked me to come. He paused like he was having trouble talking too. Did I already know why? I'm afraid I have some terrible news, he said, and I choked back a sob. Your parents have been in a horrible accident, he finally managed, and I gasped as a tear rolled down my cheek. I gazed up at him, my eyes wide open. I'm sorry, he said. Speechless. I sobbed quietly, almost soundlessly. I wiped at the tears breaking loose from my eyes, trying to hide the fact that I was weak and lost. I didn't know what to say. I didn't believe it. That it was the truth. I knew it. Is that why you're here? I finally asked, trying to stop myself from crying, but it was no use. Why are you here? I again said. I was instructed to take you to a friend, he said. He opened the door of the Lincoln. At any other time I would not have believed a complete stranger when he told me something like this. Of course, no one in their right mind would have just believed anything so outrageous without certain proof, but I could read his mind just as if he had said those words through his slim lips. I knew what he had just revealed was nothing but the truth. 
As much as I didn't want to believe it, it was the awful truth. But I still said, I don't believe you, because I didn't know what else to say. I wanted to turn and run from the truth, from him and everything, including reality. But I just stood as he held the door of the Lincoln open and gazed back at me. I have something for you from your father. He asked me to give it to you if anything ever were to happen to him or your mother. I took a deep breath as he motioned me into the Lincoln. Without hesitation, I took a step forward and watched as the chauffeur came out of the driver's side and grabbed a hold of my luggage. I climbed into the car as Mr. West closed the door behind me and walked around, climbing into the car from the other side. It was quiet for a moment as the driver climbed into the car, and then we began to move. I turned as he said, Your father made this for you. He asked me to come for you if anything ever happened to them. I'm an attorney. Are you my father's attorney? I asked. He took a deep breath. You can say that. I've helped your father make the arrangements with my client. Arrangements? I asked. And then it was clear as the thoughts that soaked his mind. Father hadn't hired him, but he was handling the paperwork for another. Someone else, a name of Edwards, kept coming into his thoughts. Someone my father trusted. He took out an iPad. He asked me to give you a message. What is it? I asked. But I could see already it was a video as he put the iPad where I could see it. The video screen opened and my father appeared on the screen. Claudia, my girl, if you're seeing this then I'm afraid. He paused. You must listen very carefully, baby. Listen to what Mr. West tells you. I can't fully explain everything, but with time you will discover the truth on your own. Right now, you must go with Mr. West. I've secured a place for you with a person I trust. He will care for you now. All the arrangements have been made for your comfort and your safety. You must trust me and believe me that I did all this to protect you. We love you. Never forget that. We love you. Nicholas, please let me. My father held my mother back, and I could see her on the screen pleading and crying to speak into the video to tell me more. But she knew she couldn't. I love you. She could only say this before she broke into sobs. My father smiled into the screen as he reached forward to touch the monitor. I did the same. And for that moment our hands touched, if only through the screen, for one last time. We're with you always, Claudia. And then he was gone. Mr. West slowly pulled the iPad back. He tucked it into his briefcase and sat there silently. That's all of the message. I was instructed to deliver it to you in the event that something happened to them. I received word of the accident early this morning. Again, I'm sorry for your loss. Early this morning, I thought. I was gone by then. I had left the night before in the cover of darkness. Father said it would be best and that I had nothing to be afraid of. I trusted Father. He had the best intentions for me. But now I wondered what he feared when I felt him holding me before the limo arrived to pick me up. They just stood there waving as the limo carried me to the airport alone. Not that I was afraid to be alone, but we were always together. All final burial arrangements have been taken care of. All the details are in the documents. He continued talking, pulling documents from his briefcase. Do you have any questions for me? He continued, like a nervous wreck. They weren't supposed to die, I cut him off. 
as the car continued down the street. They weren't, were they? But they still planned this, didn't they? I asked, looking over at Mr. West, at the car continued moving. They still planned to send me away with this person. They wanted to protect you, Mr. West simply said, then returned to his documents. Where will the funeral be held? I asked, looking down at my lap. There won't be one, Mr. West answered, looking up, concerned by what he planned to reveal. Your father's will gave specific instructions that upon his and your late mother's death, their bodies be cremated immediately. But, as I mentioned, all the arrangements have already been taken care of. There's nothing for you to be worried about. He looked over at me, sympathetically. Who is Dr. Edwards? I asked, completely off the topic, but it was something on his mind. A name that kept popping into his head, a name he wished could take his place. He hated being the bearer of bad news. Mr. West turned. He looked shocked. He had never revealed the other party's name. But no matter how surprised he was that I knew this, he didn't answer my question. But didn't I already know 